Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna do um, three different gatefold templates. Um, the SVG is available in my library. The first one is um, this one with, that has curved front gate panels, and I'm just gonna go ahead and fold them on their score lines that were created when I cut out the SVG file. And this one's super handy because um, that curve would be really hard to measure and cut on your own. And then this one is um, kind of like a tuxedo or a shirt panel. The, the tops kind of angle down into the center of the card and they overlap a little bit more than a regular gate panel or a gatefold card. And then the third one, oh, and these measure four and a quarter by five and a half. Each one has the exact same base panel in the back. So four and a quarter wide, five and a half tall, which is an A2 card. And then the third one is just your regular standard gatefold um, card. So each of the side panels fold in and meet precisely in the middle. And um, so when your card is all folded and closed, it's the four and a quarter by five and a half or A2 size. And this is going to be the first one that we decorate. So I'm just going to make sure that my creases on my fold lines are good. And then uh, we'll get started on decorating the Gate panels are very similar, like the idea is because it's like a garden gate. You can choose to put a belly band on this, or um, and if you do that, then you can attach things like this um, scallop circle or uh, frame to the front, and it'll just help to hold it closed. So we're going to go ahead and get started decorating this one. And the first thing I want to do is uh, do a background on this white piece of paper. Um, it's going to be the insert for the back of my card, and I wanted to do a scene using the Lawn Fawn Wolves. So I'm just going to use this My Sweet Petunia at scratch paper and uh, different Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to do Stormy Sky, Villainous Potion, uh, Speckled Egg, and then Peeled Grain. And I'm just going to um, start at the top and kind of work my way down to the green so that it looks like kind of an, an evening or night sky. And I'm sorry for the camera shaking, but the table's just not that sturdy. It's not terrible this time, but if I get, start rubbing too hard, it gets pretty shaky. So I'm just going to start with the purple and then kind of work my way down through the dark blues. And the idea is to put those little lawn fawn um, howling wolves at the bottom and then the moon in the sky. So I kind of want it to look like that evening night sky or like dusk kind of. So I'm just going to yeah, keep blending these two inks across. Add a little bit more blue. And then I'm just going to mix in the light blue and, um, and then fade that down into the green. And for some reason, they look pretty splotchy on the camera, but they don't look that splotchy in real life. Um, it might just be part of the color or the way the lighting was. Okay, and then I'm just going to go across the bottom with a little bit of green. And this is just because I didn't want like a solid white background paper. I wanted something with just a little bit more visual oomph. But then this is also where I'm going to be adding like the little scene and then my sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off and uh, it's going to go on the insert for this gatefold card. I'm going to run some tape runner adhesive across the back of it. And if you didn't already watch this video um, and you need to know which tape runner you want to use, there's I'm going to link to it. There's um, a video on all the different tape runners. And the ones that I've tried and the ones that I like. And um, so far, this Easy Grand has been my favorite. Okay, so once that's attached, then I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern papers on the outside of the panels. Um, and I already kind of had my, like, design plan uh, done with these stamps that I'd already colored and cut. So I've just got a piece of scrap paper, kind of a light blue with some dots. And I'm going to put that panel on each or that pattern paper on each panel and if you want your Cricut to cut your pattern papers for you these are included in the file they're usually a bright pink or bright purple for pattern papers 
I'm just going to attach the second panel and then I'm ready to start putting all my little stamped images on there. Um, I use the Barely Arts glue and if you're not sure which liquid glue you want to use, you can check out that um, a video on that as well, which I'll link. They, um, I went through a handful of different liquid glues to see which ones I like the best and the Barely Arts is probably one of my top favorites. And then all of these little guys, I just stamped uh, using my my um, Misty stamper, and then I colored with my Copic markers, and then cut them out with the little die cut machine. There were a few extra wolves that I stamped, but they um, my for some reason my Copic decided to just bleed ink all over everything, and so I lost a few. And then add the stars and the moon and my little sentiment the big the outside's gonna say I miss you and then the inside says a whole a howl lot and you could also just stamp your sentiment inside the card but I already had these stamped so I just cut them apart and used them And you could also stamp images in there and then just mask them off and then blend your background. Like there are different ways to get your background in there as well as your sentiments. Okay, so now that the inside's finished, we're going to go ahead and glue on a few of the little pieces for the outside. And there's just a couple little trees that I colored and cut and then a little bird. And a few little, I think another little wolf and then... If your pieces don't fit perfectly on the panel, you can always like have them overhang and then trim off. This one just happened to fit just right, so I didn't have to trim anything. I'm going to put the bird down in the bottom corner. He could have gone in the tree too, but I just kind of liked him down on the ground. And then there's another little mini tree. and then there's just this little rock and originally I was going to put it on the inside but it was kind of running out of room and it looks better over by the bird so we'll just stick it over here by the bird and then I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of paper to use for a belly band and basically it's just an inch tall and then it was 12 inches because it was from the pattern paper so um, I'm going to kind of hold it up to my card and then wrap it around and then I'll trim it. So you just want to lightly fold on the edges. You don't want it to be like so tight that you can't slide it up and down, but you also want it to be loose enough that it does slide. So just kind of like eyeball guesstimate, kind of use your card as a template. And then once I have it kind of where I want it, I'm just going to fold this backwards and put a good crease in it. And then I can just tear this piece off. You can use scissors, you can use your cutter. Um, I'm just going to fold it a few times and then just tear it regular because I can hide that underneath when I re-glue the belly band. So then I'll just put it back on over my card again and it's already got its creases so it's already sized right and then I'll just run a little bit of glue underneath this tab and give it a second to hold. And then just be sure that you don't squish your glue out onto your card and get it stuck to your card. Okay, once you have your belly band attached, then you can go ahead and put your sentiment on the front of it. I used um, just the Spellbinders, like little framelits, and um, you can cut these out with your Cricut or whatever cutting like machine you have. Uh, I just happen to have some of these dies too, so um, and I really like this shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and, these are, it's a little crooked, so my glue's not quite dry. I can pull it up and redo and try to get that better centered. Okay, one more dry. Add a touch more glue since it was already soaking into the fibers. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and, so I already had the, uh, I miss you stamped as well. So I'm, I just cut that out of a little piece of paper and I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the front of these little framelits and then um, 
I can glue the whole little stacked piece, like pile of paper framelit onto my belly band. And the idea is that you can just slide it off to open the card and then um, it should just slide right back on to hold your card closed. And if you decide that you want to cover the inside, um, like if you don't like the pattern that's on the inside, you could always put white paper in there or like double layer it. I'm um, not too worried about it. And I didn't want it to be too thick. So there's that card. And we're going to move on to the next one, which is um, like kind of the angled front gatefold. And I stamped and colored these cute little gnomes. And then I, um, I actually stamped them twice, colored one little gnome all the way, and then colored little pieces of a second stamped image and then cut those out so that I could make them three-dimensional. So on this little guy, he's got his hat and beard and his arm will be 3D, so I'll just foam dot those up and then the mushrooms for details. And this is from um, a Lawn Fawn um, thing and I actually glued it all together when I did my glue review, the liquid glue review, which I'll link below and then the scallop and the circle are part of the template and so you'll find those in that same svg for these gatefold cards and then um, same with the pattern paper and i just um, cut out a fall color pattern paper and then like kind of a creamy white for the background inside of my card okay so i'm going to go ahead and run my tape runner on the back of the pattern paper just so i can and then stick down my pattern paper um, I'm flipping my card upside down and open just so that it's a little bit flatter and easier to deal with. And then just kind of line up with the border and stick down your pattern. And same with this one. And then um, that one's a little crooked. So the good thing is it kind of like with that tape runner tape, you can kind of pull it up and reposition if you need to. Uh, as long as you haven't like pressed it down super hard, it's it's usually like it's stuck, but it's not so stuck you can't redo. And then I'm just going to run the tape runner again um, across this kind of cream colored card stock that I'm going to put on the inside of my card. And then I'll just stick that on the back panel. And again, these are like four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And if you want to resize these, you can. They resize pretty well to like five and seven. It's like 7.02 or something like that. Like if you skew it just a little bit, it's not going to hurt it. So my plan is to put this scallop and white circle on the front and then include this little, um, the little note on it. And then I'll just trim down the edges once I get the sizing and like where I want it placed. So I'm going to glue the circle and put it on the scallop. And then I want it to be on the outside panel. And then my idea was to put like one of the little gnomes on each side of the panel. And so I'll probably put this little gnome here on the right hand side panel and then the other gnome on the left panel. And then that means I'm going to have to scooch that scallop up just a tiny bit which actually kind of works for the design too. I kind of like that it's up above them a little bit. So I'm going to foam dot behind my cut pieces for my stamps. So that'll be like on the head of each of the gnomes. And then um, down on his little mitten so that it holds his arm. Because on this little guy, I actually cut out his arm, his mustache, nose, and hat for my 3D look. And then once that guy's done and on, then I'm ready to add the pieces for the other guy. And same idea, he's, um, I just cut out his nose and mustache and his hat. So I only need like two foam dots for that. And then I did the, the head of the flower. So I just need to pull off the backing for those foam dots. And then the flower, you don't have to like precisely line it up because it, it kind of gives that better 3D look if they're a little jaggedy, but you still want it to be like facing upright. So I just kind of got a general positioning on that and then went ahead and stuck it down. 
and then for the little gnome guy, for this little gnome guy, um, yeah, I just did it, just the top half for that 3D look. So then I just go ahead and stick that down too. And now that those are done, I'm going to run some glue on the back and then I realize, oh, I've, I have to be able to like just put it on one panel. So I'm going to hold it over the panel that I want and then kind of run the glue behind it so that um, I'm not sticking it onto that second panel because I don't actually want it to seal my card closed. I just want it to kind of float on that left-hand panel. And now that that's glued down, I can go ahead and glue down my gnomes. Okay, and now that they're glued down, um, and I just kind of want him right to the edge of my card. If he went over just a little bit, I could snip him off, but I kind of like that the left panel covers over that mushroom just a little and kind of does a peekaboo with it because then you want to open it up and see. So then I'm going to glue down this, um, they're, I don't, they're like little line sentiments and I cut it like four or five times and doubled it up or like overlaid it so that they're a little bit thicker, um. So I'm just going to run the glue behind the letters and a little bit down the line, but I know most of that line is going to get trimmed off. Okay. And then if I wanted to, I could write on my card and say, just a little note. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. So right now I'm just going to put a little note and then I've got a sticker sentiment to add to the inside and stuck to my fingers are the, um, they're like little quote marks and I'm going to try those on here but then I end up not liking them so then I take them off and I move them around a little bit and you'll see me move them around on the inside too but my first idea was to put them like around that a little note and th I thought that might be kind of cute but they just don't they kind of blend in too much and they just don't work I mean they're not terrible but they're they're not my favorite either so then I pull them back off and then I was thinking oh well maybe it's because they're not at the end of the word they need to be like more quotey around the word but it's just the design wasn't working I don't know if they're just too square or if it was because they were brown but these just don't I'm just not feeling it I'm going to go ahead and trim off the extra black part of that line And this is where I'm like, yep, these just don't work. So they got to come back off. And the good news is there's a sticker that doesn't like stick completely right off the bat. So they're kind of removable and I could mess with it a little bit. So then the sticker that I have for the inside is thanks a bunch. And I'm, then I'm going to glue the mushroom in. And I thought about quotes around this too, since they match, they were both the wood, wood like green looking background but it's still just not feeling it. So once I glue down this mushroom, then I rearrange again. And I want the thanks a bunch to be down closer to the mushroom. So I pull that off and stick it down next to the mushroom. And then I'm gonna leave the quotes inside, but I move them up a little bit so that there's room for me to write like a sentiment in between them or like some kind of note or whatever. And then I can sign down in the bottom corner. Okay, so then that's the second type of gatefold card. Um, not symmetrical and just a little bit more visually appealing because it's a little bit um, different angles, but still fun. And now we're going to work on the third one, which is the curvy one. And for this one, I cut out um, a bunch of bees and um, like little honeybees and some honeybee paper. And um, I was originally going to stamp a sentiment on the inside but I found some stickers that I liked for this one too. But before that, I have the white paper and I want to do a little bit of stencil inking on it. So I'm just gonna use that My Sweet Petunia, um, like, I guess it's just like a background scrap paper again, but it works even if it's not in your uh, Misty Stamper. And I'm gonna, I've got this um, like honeycomb hexagon kind of pattern that would work for like chain link fence or whatever, but then it's also, it's going to match the pattern of that, the scrapbook paper that came with this bee collection. So I'm just kind of lining it up along the edge of like, there's, 
the grid on the petunia paper and I'm going to line up my background paper on that first and then I'm lining up my stencil and then I'm just going to tape it down with some leftover tacky like the low tack tape that I had from doing my die cuts and it's just going to kind of hold the stencil there for me and I don't want to like stencil the entire background I just want to do kind of a light um like spotty looking kind of inking so I'm just going to kind of do the top corners and then kind of make it flow down along to the bottom just a little bit and it, it doesn't take much I just wanted kind of something to break up that white paper in the background and not have it be completely white. And you could also stamp your sentiment or another little bee on here and color it or whatever. I just already had all the bees stamped and colored, so I'm just going to glue them inside my card instead. But like a stamped sentiment in the middle of that um, inked area would be really cute too. So now this goes inside the card panel on that, on that back panel again, and I'm just going to use my tape runner and finish that up. And then for my pattern paper panels, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my glue because they're kind of a funky shape and it would just be easier than um, trying to run that tape runner on like that curve. I'm just going to run some glue on the back of this pattern paper and then just match it up with whichever outside panel it, it goes with, which on this case, it's the left hand side. And again, I have these in the SVG file and I just had my machine cut it out for me. I didn't have to like try to eyeball it and measure or anything. I just let the machine do the work. And you can do the same once you grab the template out of the library. Okay, and then I'm just going to glue on the second panel. And then I cut this little hexagon with um, one of the Echo Park like hexagon dies, and that's why it's got the little like stitching around the edge. And then the sticker is from the the pattern paper pack, and um, I think it's a doodle bug. But I just I, I really like those pattern papers within that sticker. But I like I like that hexagon cut out too. So um, I'm going to use that for my sentiment and then I'm just going to start gluing down all the little elements that I've already cut out and colored. And then it's just a matter of figuring out which bees I want where and all the little elements. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down this flower and then I want to add a little bit of dimension so I'm actually going to pop dot the little bee that's going to be flying over the flower. So I'm going to grab a couple of those little foam dots. And then the idea is just to kind of spread out the other bees and because I've got enough of them. So I'm going to put a couple on the inside with my sentiment. These two bees are pretty much, they're like the same shape, but one's got like a little smiley face and the other one's got like that closed eye smiley face. So I'm going to put the closed eye guy inside and then I'm going to, um, the sticker sentiment I want is this don't worry, be happy. And so I'm just going to slip it a little bit behind the bee and then it's just kind of like a pop of color and some fun visual. You could also um, stamp a sentiment in there or handwrite a sentiment in there. I just had all these stickers and stuff that still went with this set, so I'm trying to use up some of my scraps. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck it behind that little B, and then that's the inside of my sentiment or the inside of my card. And then I'm going to finish decorating with the rest of these bees. And I kind of want um, one down in this bottom corner. And then I'm going to put um, the flower and the leaf up by the howdy and just kind of decorate the little word section. And just kind of tuck that back behind the flower. And then the last little bee, I kind of want over on that right hand panel. He just seems to fit over there better. And it makes it look like he's the one that's saying howdy. So that's a perfect spot for him. And I'm going to give him a little bit of a foam dot too, just to give him a little bit more dimension and to kind of match the one on the left hand panel. Okay. So again, the templates for these gatefold cards are in this, in 
the library on the site and you can download those, those for free. Um, if you have any questions and you'd like to leave a comment, go ahead and do so below. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. And hopefully you enjoy making these three cards as well.